welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10, broadcasting on channels television, live from Lagos. Thank you for sending in these pictures. And uh, please note that uh, anybody can report news and events as they happen around you. As the nation gears up for another political transition on May the 29th, a full complement of police officers will be deployed to man areas of high risk. This was clarified by the Assistant Inspector General of Police in charge of Zone 2, Joseph Mbu, during the official commissioning ceremony of the Zonal Special Anti-Robbery Squad Office in Lagos. Mr. Mbu also challenged officers of the zone to be alive to their responsibilities. I just directed, directing the zonal AIGs and the command CPs to fortify the areas. We have done that. We are very prepared. We prepare for the elections. And we are the handing over is not as problematic as the election period. So every, every Nigerian is happy. Nigerian, every Nigerian wants peace. They want change. And they are expecting the change. And nobody is anticipating crisis. But because of the important international figures that are coming in, uh, we have made sure no uh, every security arrangement is put in place to ensure that everything is, is, uh, is okay and uh, goes hitch free. The Federal High Court sitting in Lagos has ordered the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, to vacate the residential and other properties of Ogun State Senator elect Uruji Kashamu. The court made the order today while ruling on an application filed by Mr. Kashamu through his lawyer. Ajibola Uluyede. The application was set for the committal proceedings of the Attorney General of the Federation, Mr. Mohamed Adoke, and the Chairman of the NDLEA, Ahmadu Giade. The application was filed yesterday before Justice Ibrahim Buba, who then summoned both men to appear before him today to explain why they disobeyed a court order to maintain status quo on an alleged plan to abduct Mr. Kashamu and extradite him to the United States to face charges of drug trafficking. The NDLEA, however, failed to produce the Senator-elect in court as his lawyers demanded to see the arrest warrant on which authority the agency was acting, but the agency could not provide one. The NDLEA had laid siege to Mr. Kashamu's Lekki residence and placed him under house arrest. In the meantime, the siege to Mr. Buruji Kashamu's residence may not end soon as the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency has dismissed the order by the Federal High Court asking it to vacate the property and requesting both the Attorney General of the Federation, Mr. Belo Aduke, and Chairman of the NDLEA, Ahmadu Giade, to appear in court. The NDLEA, in a statement, described the court order as diversionary and inconsequential the agency adds, and I quote, the NDLEA does not believe that any court will issue an order preventing a government agency from performing its statutory responsibilities in a lawful manner. The agency has therefore refused to be distracted and will continue to maintain its presence at the residence. It is advisable that Kashamo respects the law by submitting himself to the due process of the law, end of quote. Pledging to ensure that Mr. Kashamu's rights are respected and the due process of law followed in this case, the NDLEA says it is prepared to explore all legal means in pursuing the matter to a logical conclusion. While well, the waiting is still on at the Lekki Phase 1 residence of the Ogun State Senator-elect, Mr. Buruji Kashamu, where officials of the NDLEA have cordoned off his home since last Saturday. Earlier in the day, a small group of women and men stormed the neighborhood singing songs of solidarity after news broke out that a federal high court sitting in Lagos had ordered the NDLEA to vacate the premises of the embattled politician. In the meantime, the men from the NDLEA are still seen in strategic locations around his home. More than 10 years after the conception of a law to harmonize the administration of criminal justice in the country, the Administration of Crim Criminal Justice Act has been presented to the public.
The Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Mohamed Adoke, explained that the law, which was passed by the National Assembly this month and approved by President Goodluck Jonathan, brings Nigeria closer to global best practices in the administration of criminal justice. Our correspondent, Amaka Okafor, has a report. The need to reform the administration of criminal justice in Nigeria was conceived in 2003, more than a decade after the law is now a reality. It is for this reason that these members of the bar and the bench and politicians gather to celebrate the public presentation of the law. But before the presentation, the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Mr. Mohamed Adoke, explains that the new laws, as expected, will enhance criminal justice delivery in the country and bring Nigeria at par with other countries in the area of criminal justice delivery. But like Oliver Twist, he asked for more. The Administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015 and the Cyber Crime Prohibition and Prevention Act 2015 that will be publicly presented today is in fulfillment of the reform agenda and a befitting response to the yearnings of stakeholders in the justice sector for a legislation that encapsulates all the ingredients that enhance the administration of justice and one that effectively criminalizes act that has contributed to the negative image and perception of Nigerians all over the world. I still look forward to the passage of other critical justice sector reform bills such as the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court Domestication and Implementation Bill, the Extradition Bill, the Mutual Legal Assistance Bill, and the Process of Crime Bill. While the prison service hailed the law as the best thing to happen to it in recent times, the Nigerian Bar Association has asked for mechanisms to ensure that the law works. We have the laws in place now. It will be for the practitioners to ensure that these bills work for the due administration of justice. Today, we are happy because of the message of this bill, which means that the prison will return to what it used to be. That is, centers for the treatment of convicted persons. On paper, these laws are as good as they should be. It remains to be seen if this will be translated into action. Amaka Okafo, Channels Television News. The Ogun State Governor, Ibikunle Amosu, and his party, the All Progressive Congress, have filed a motion before the Ogun State Governorship Election Petition Tribunal, challenging the competence of the petition brought before it by the Mega Progressive People's Party, MPPP. Both the MPPP and the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and its candidate in the last election, Mr. Boiga Isiaka, had filed separate petitions challenging the outcome of the last governorship election, which returned Governor Omosu elect elected. Citing grounds for the motion, the APC and Mr. Omosu said the tribunal lacks jurisdiction to entertain and determine the petition, as the petitioner failed to disclose any reasonable cause for action. The application also stated that the petition was filed in gross violation of the provisions of Section 134, Subsection 1, of the Electoral Act 2010 as amended. The elected members of the House of Representatives on the platform of the All Progressive Congress have been urged by the party's leadership to be agents of change in the Green Chamber. At the party's ongoing retreat organized for the lawmakers in Abuja, the national chairman of the party, Chief John Oyegun, challenged the legislators elect to ensure that they help the party deliver on its promises to Nigeria. This gathering of all Progressive Congress officials and elected members of the House of Representatives is aimed at sharing ideas among members as well as remind the lawmakers of the task ahead. First, the national chairman of the party in his welcome address urged the elected members to be good ambassadors of their party. What is important for now is to have the courage, the passion to face the challenges that confront our nation. And for each and every one of us, from the date you are sworn in, in uh, speaking by the Honorable Members now, to become by personal conduct in the little things of this life, a passionate proselyte for the doctrine of change. 
Other guest speakers at the forum also tasked the lawmakers on an all-inclusive government by giving more opportunities to the women. On the 29th of May, when the power uh, handover takes place, we need to see change. This government cannot afford to be exclusive of any of the groups, and in particular, women, youth, and persons with disabilities. I'm speaking to the inclusion of women. Earlier, one of the contestants for the Speakership of the House, Mohamed Mungunu, announced his withdrawal from the race because of the unity of the party. I'm withdrawing from the appointments to the presiding office of the Speaker of the House of Representatives. And I'm formally setting down to contest for the office of the Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives. Agitations for who becomes the Speaker of the House and President of the Senate in the 8th Assembly has been a hot topic for discussion in the last few weeks. The resolution will be one of the first hurdle to be crossed by these lawmakers. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives has urged the executive to commence the reconstruction and rehabilitation of communities that have been liberated from Boko Haram militants. This followed the motion by Mr. Abdul Rahman Terab on the need to take this step as camps for internally displaced persons are now overstretched. According to the House, the reconstruction can be achieved through the Victim Support Fund, the Presidential Initiative for the Northeast, and the National Emergency Management Agency. The House is aware that the Nigerian military have in the recent past recaptured and liberated some of the communities which hitherto used to be under the control of the insurgents. The House is also aware that various funding arrangements have been provided for the reconstruction and rehabilitation of, li li of liberated communities through the Presidential Initiative for the Northeast as well as the Victim Support Fund. We worry that most internally displayed camps are at the moment of a stretch with severe challenges of both space and resources. The House is disturbed that most of the internally displaced persons whose communities have been fully liberated are physically and psychologically desirous and determined to return to their liberated communities in order to free up the camps and allow more space for some incoming IDPs that are recently being rescued by the military. The House is concerned that the return of the IDPs to their communities must be supported by certain basic infrastructure and rehabilitation as already envisaged by various government intentions, programs, as well as captured in the 2015 budget. Cutting of trees for firewood and the attendant risks associated with smoke in the kitchen may soon be a thing of the past, going by the efforts of the federal government. At the commissioning of the clean cooking stoves in Abuja, Vice President Namadi Sambo said Nigerian women will no longer die of smoke-related diseases if they embrace the new and cheap technology. The Minister of Environment, Mrs. Laurentia Malam, told State House correspondents at the launch that 5 billion naira has been released to the ministry for the purchase of the clean cooking stoves for rural women, a project which is expected to gulp 9.2 billion naira. This program, which Mr. President has graciously approved for the initial takeoff under the environmental ministry, the sum of 9 billion naira, to procure these cooking utensils and distribute it all over the country to our women and by so doing uh, stops you know contributes in stopping the usage of cut trees firewood for cooking when the news at 10 returns Federal lawmakers seek support of Africa for Dr. Akimumi Adeshino's candidacy for the African Development Bank's presidency. That's on Business News. Please join us again.